So, having looked at Hebrews 1.10, go back and look at John, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God, who according to Jesus Christ, in John 1, is Jesus Christ, John 1, 3, and the Father and the Spirit. Matter of fact, Elohim, God. In the Hebrew, is Elohim. And the word created, bara, is singular. So plural, Elohim, singular, created, bara. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Take a look at the Greek, the Hebrew. Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, created. Hey, um, a perfect, singular. Masculine, singular, created. But God, noun, masculine, plural. Is that a mistake? No. That's intentional. It appears this way many times in the scripture. So, the heavens and the earth. So, John 1, 3 to 4. Through him all things were made. That's creator God. Without him nothing was made that has been made. That's also Jesus Christ. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. In him was life. Was life is the durative past tense. Always was life, suggesting our Lord's eternality. And then we have John 1, 4 above, compared with John 14, 6, below. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You see, he's the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Talking about a number of things. In his essence, Jesus Christ is God, creator God, John 1, 3. And also, his salvation, the Christ. So, <clears throat> no one comes to the Father but through me. You can't get to heaven unless you do through Jesus Christ by faith alone. What does it mean to say that Christ, Jesus Christ is life? John just finished saying in verse 1, 3, that Jesus Christ, the Word, is the source of of all physical and spiritual life, verses 1, 4, and 14, 6 were looked at and compared of John. John says more particularly that Jesus Christ always was and is <clears throat> the sole source of life with God, the Father, eternal life, spiritual life in heaven, physical life as well. Genesis, Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Here it is. It states that the Word who is Jehovah God Almighty created the heavens and the earth. And Colossians 1, 16 to 17 states that Jesus Christ created all things, which included the heavens and the earth, then Jesus Christ is God. There's no way of getting around it. A lot of people, they don't want to read these things and compare it honestly. <clears throat> John Morris states in his commentary, Life in the Gospel of John characteristically refers to eternal life, the gift of God through his Son. Here, however, John 1, 4, the term must be taken in its broadest broadest sense. It is only because there is life in the Logos, Greek for word, that there is life in anything on earth at all. Life does not exist in its own right. It is not even spoken of in this particular verse as made by or through the word, but as existing in him. Those are amazing little prepositions. Make sure and be careful. Sometimes a translation doesn't do justice to what we're looking at. The important thing about eternal life is not its quantity but it's quality. In Westcott's phrase, it is not an endless duration of being in time, but being of which time is not a measure. Eternal life is life in Christ, that life which removes man from the, the mere earthly, let me fix this, from the mere earthly, it's, it originates in a divine action in a man's being born anew. It is the gift of God and not the achievement of man. So we continue to look at John 1, 3 to 4. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. In him was life. That phrase, in order to understand and appreciate the importance of spiritual life and an eternal life, we must first realize that we are all born spiritually dead. Romans 5, 12. Therefore, just to sin into the world through one man, Adam, and death through sin, in this way death came to all men, because all sin through Adam. Lewis Berry Chafer states on this issue, systematic theology. Because of his sin, Adam became a different kind of being from what God had created. Each descendant of Adam has re reproduced his fallen nature, following the law that each person produces according to his kind. 
So we have Genesis 1, 24 to 25, and God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that move along the ground, wild animals each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and we're getting the man here, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. And upon creating man, when God said, Be fruitful and increase, fill the earth and subdue it. But when Adam and Eve sinned, indicated, God indicated that mankind and all creation had indeed changed. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. Notice that serpents change physically, as did all of nature and man, because of the sin in the garden. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Fatal blow to the serpent, devil. And I will put enmity, hostility between you. This phrase is a statement of God to the agent controlling the serpent, Satan. Fallen angel Lucifer, your offspring, the offspring of Satan, demons and unbelievers. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. Her offspring refers to Abel, who was the first of Eve's children to become a believer, and men of all ages who are believers in God's provision of salvation. Her offspring more, most significantly includes Jesus Christ, the Savior, who will defeat Satan. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head. There is the fatal, fatal blow, and you will strike his heel. That's in Genesis 3. He will crush your head. He, literally from the Hebrew, the seed, singular, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will crush your head. In ancient Hebrew, the term crush your head meant to deal with one a mortal blow such that that person was destroyed. So this phrase is saying that Christ will deal with Satan a mortal blow. And by paying the penalty for sin and resurrecting from the dead, thus wrestling rulership over mankind from Satan and condemning Satan and his offspring of unbelievers to be under the internal destruction of the lake of fire. So, and you will strike his heel. In ancient Hebrew, the strike term to strike one's heel meant to wound, but not mortally. So this phrase is saying that Satan will wound our Lord, but not mortally in the sense of totally destroying him. History then reveals that Jesus Christ was crucified, but this not, did not destroy him, for he rose from the dead triumphantly. To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain you will give birth to children. Now, So now Eve and all women will have pain when giving birth to their children. The following passages indicate further changes God made from the perfect condition in the Garden of Eden, which we will have those perfect conditions in eternity. Genesis 3, 17 to 19. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree above which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you, Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you will eat of it. They didn't have to eat in the garden. Food was ready ready to eat. All the days of your life. Verse 18, it will produce thorns and thistles for you. <clears throat> and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow. You will eat your food and you, until you return to the ground since from it you were taken. For the dust you are, and to dust you will return. So, and so mankind and nature were sadly changed. Man's offspring would now reflect this change so that no longer could man, God treat man as he did before. Genesis 3.22 And the Lord God said this, then man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. One of us, you know that? That's the Godhead. But it's plural. But the verbs are singular. Man has experienced evil, thereby contaminating his nature, and in this sense knows of evil. God, who is sovereign and omniscient, knows of evil without experiencing it and without contaminating his nature. Note that the singularity of God is in this passage is expressed. That there is only one God is expressed in the singular form of the verb said in the verse above. And notice the plurality of the Godhead in this verse, that there is more than one personality that makes up who God is, as indicated by the word us, and by the Hebrew word 
Elohim, which is plural. Never does it vary that way, as a matter of fact. We're talking about the other God of the Bible. Genesis 3, 22b to 23. He, man, must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever in such a depraved, rebellious condition as he is now in. So the Lord God banished him from the garden to work the ground from which he had been taken. So let us return to the verse that the Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Christians at Rome, Romans 5:12. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, Adam, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all men, because all sin through Adam. The verb sin, himartin, is in the active voice which indicates that all of Adam's descendants participated in his original sin and therefore will die. As we discussed, Scripture makes it clear that through the seed of Adam, everyone inherits a sin nature and death. This is the scriptural principle of transmission, transmission of an action by one to one's descendants. For example, in the book of Hebrews, Levi participated in the paying of tithes by Abraham to Melchizedek before Levi was even born. God's word says that Levi, in Hebrews 7.10b, was in the body of his ancestor Abraham in Abraham's loins, Hebrews 6.19 to 7.28. So, we all, we all participated in Adam's rebellion when we were in the body of Adam. This principle of transmission of the sin nature is established by the sovereign authority of God and revealed to us in his word. And here it is. 1 Corinthians 15, 21 to 22. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the death comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. So all who are in Christ, all who have trusted alone in his name alone for eternal life will be made alive with ha and will have, in other words, eternal life. So we're talking about the potential. In Christ, in Christ, all will be made alive. Those who believe, that there's a potential that all individuals have a choice to believe and be made alive, but you have to believe to become in Christ. So to summarize, everyone inherits a sin nature and death through Adam. Not only do we inherit physical death, but spiritual death, physical death, but spiritual death as well. Genesis 2, 16 to 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. But you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For on that day you will surely die, die dying. There's two dies dying there. On that day, literally, in the Hebrew translation, you will surely die dying. You will die dying, a funny sounding phrase, which says that there will be an immediate death, spiritual, and you will die. And then another eventual physical death, another death, physical, you will, be die, you will die dying. You will die spiritually immediately while, while you are physically dying. Adam did not immediately die physically, but began to gradually die, and he lived to be 930 years old. We die in our 90s, not 930s. Adam's immediate spiritual death, spiritual separation from God, is evident in Scripture when he and Eve attempted to hide from God, who they used to understand as omniscient, all-knowing. Genesis 3:8. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, pre-incarnate Christ. God appearing to them as usual in a form that such that they would could more intimately communicate with him. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees in the, of the garden. So on that day, Adam and Eve died spiritually, as evidenced by their trying to hide from an, an omniscient God thus showing an ignorance and an alienation or separation from him, whereas before they were in an intimate relationship with him. And on that day, Adam, as the federal head and representative of the human race, ensured that all of humanity would be born spiritually dead, and that all newborn babies would inherit a sin nature and spiritual death through his seed as it passed from generation to generation. But hope in Christ is the answer. The Apostle Paul refers to coming spiritually alive in his letter to the believers at Ephesus 
Ephesians 2, 1. And you were made alive, and, and you he made alive when you were dead in your trespasses.